is uh, April 10th right now, the morning of April 10th, 3.50 a.m. to be precise, I kid you not. Um, I'm pulling another all-nighter. Um, just thought I'd uh, take a time out for a second just to mention that, uh, um, as you have no doubt observed by now, unless your, your eyesight is really bad, uh, this video editor is three tapes in size. That's right, uh, approximately six hours in length total is what I'm predicting. Uh, I'm not sure, it'll probably be a little shorter than that. Uh, probably around four and a half, five hours total. Anyway, it's gonna be on three tapes, and each tape will have a separate uh, sort of topic. And as you may have guessed by now, the topic for this particular tape is, that's right, your favorite and mine, video games. Well, you've seen Sonic the Hedgehog, so you must be thinking, I've seen Sonic the Hedgehog, what more is there, what more could there possibly be? Well, I'll tell you. Next up, you may recall uh, in Video Letter 7, I mentioned a game to you called Out of This World. Original title, Another World. Well, now you're going to see it. I have taped it, it is edited together. Uh, wait a minute, I mentioned that in the last intro, didn't I? Well, anyway, it's next. We have another world to show you. Uh, I tagged the original title on. I have the demo disc for it, so I tagged the original title on the beginning. Uh, because there's a little message at the end of the game that really, uh, with the title as Out of This World, uh, the little message at the end of the game doesn't really make any sense. However, with the original title, Another World, the uh, little message at the end of the game does make sense. Um, yeah, so next up is Another World. Enjoy. And let's see how our friend the Video Meister is treating his guest while we're at it. Wait till you see this game. Not another video game. I told you I was going to leave. Oh, come on. You'll like it. All right. I'll sit and watch this one. But this is the last one. Another world. Greetings everyone, Sean from the future here. Um, I'm going to wait until after the intro here to do the commentary, so enjoy.
And that's it for the intro. So, Dr. Lester Knight Chaikin was doing some kind of particle accelerator experiment. Foolishly decided to do so on the night of a raging storm. A horrible accident took place and blasted him into another world. And that's where our story picks up. So essentially, this is a joystick-based action game, but very cinematic in its presentation. Um, it was using uh, polygon-based graphics, which was pretty innovative at the time. Uh, you got to understand, this was in an era where sprite-based games were the thing, and 3D games hadn't really happened yet. It wouldn't be until a few years later when uh, computers started to get a little bit more powerful we would start to see the first you know the beginnings of 3d games and whatnot so in this case you know you gotta you gotta kill these things otherwise they will kill you but um the little dots on the end of those slug things are fangs so if they uh if you walk past them without killing them they'll actually do a little flip and bite you with their fang and you die instantly oh god <laughs> run So, a lot of trial and error in this game, <laughs> as you try to figure out what to do. Um, now, if the name Another World is not familiar to you, or perhaps is familiar to you for something else, it was changed to Out of This World for the North American releases. I think because Another World is the name of a long-running soap opera here in North America, and they wanted to avoid confusion or possible copyright issues. Um, but, oh, I've been saved. Um, hi, H how's it going? I come in peace. <laughs> he seems friendly, or not. Okay. So, <laughs> I remember my, uh, friends at the time were... Uh, very understandably blown away by this game and uh, its use of, of polygon graphics and its cinematic aspects. You get these little cutaways and stuff and yeah, like his vision coming into focus. This is all stuff that we totally take for granted and is no big deal now. But you have to understand in 1992 this was really cutting edge stuff um, and nothing like this had been done before. Now to give you some idea also of just how efficiently programmed this is this is running on an amiga 2000 with uh eight megabytes of memory and two megabytes of graphics memory or chip memory so 10 megabytes of memory total and a 7.14 megahertz processor 68,000 processor and that's it so all these real-time 3d polygon graphics are being generated on a machine that isn't even as powerful as your phone nowadays so um pretty impressive stuff <clears throat> oh look at that what a great shot I'm grabbing the gun like yeah now i'm armed so there was a friend of a friend that i showed this when i first got this game i was just showing it to everybody like oh my god you have to see this it's so amazing it's so cinematic it's like just incredible um so I was showing it to a friend of a friend who was one of those types that claimed that he had a super high IQ and was so smart and stuff. And I showed it to him, and right from the opening scene, he's like, oh, pretty bad graphics, eh? And I just, like, look at him, and I'm like, no, actually, fucking incredible graphics? What are you talking about? He's like, oh. <laughs> he just did not grasp why this is so amazing. Uh, so, needless to say, I didn't show him any more games after that. I was like, you know what? You're not worthy of witnessing the splendor that is the Amiga. Oh, yeah, this is... I always like this part. Yes. So, presumably... That tower, all the way at the other end of the city, is where we need to get to, so... Um, Alright, we've got a long journey ahead of us here. So this whole game, to make it even more amazing, was actually done by one guy. 
uh, very innovative, creative programmer, game designer named Eric Chahi. Um, he's done a few games over the years, but uh, he did, uh, uh, was it Future Wars? He worked on Future Wars, and uh, that was where he first sort of started to do stuff with polygon-based graphics, and then... Uh, he did. Uh, he, he had uh, basically an option to work on another game or develop his own game, and uh, he felt uh, it was time to kind of strike out on his own. So he did did this game, uh, heavily inspired by a lot of science fiction and stuff that he liked at the time. Um, and he was also quite impressed by the Amiga's graphical capabilities. So um, he actually learned uh, first how to program in C and found it wasn't quite efficient enough so he started uh, programming in assembly language so assembly language basically was getting one step away from machine code like like speaking directly to the computer in the computer's language and that's how a lot of uh, you know the more cutting edge games were done on the Amiga to take full advantage of the hardware and just be really efficient so uh, it's pretty pretty impressive stuff Oh yeah, this part is so freaking tense. Uh, a lot of trial and error in this part. I mean, if you fall the wrong way, it's you fall too far and die. He basically he breaks his neck. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of moments of quiet tension like that in this game. And the gun is empty. What are we going to do? Aha! Recharge chamber. I like how his hair stands up, too, when he goes in there. So, as you probably noticed, the gun has a few modes to it. Uh, controls were super simple in this. Uh, basically, you know, move left and right to run. Uh, I think you hold down the button. or I think you hold down the button to run, or otherwise he just walks. Uh, no analog joysticks, by the way, on the Amiga. It was all digital, so just like regular arcade-style joysticks. Single button. And uh, as for the gun, you would press it quickly to shoot, or you would hold it for a couple seconds to make a shield. Oh, it's like my buddy's being chased. Uh, or you'd hold it down longer to charge up that big ball, and it would send like a really powerful blast. Needless to say, the powerful blasts use more energy. So I think I'm going to do one here. Yeah. So you get the little ball, it makes a shield. You get the big ball, it does the, the like mega blast. Here we go. So there's been a few versions of this uh, released over the years. Um, I actually have a, a version of this for the 3DO, which was a pretty big deal at the time because they did some improvements to the graphics. Uh, they also upped the difficulty. I remember that part that I just did there was a lot more difficult. Or maybe it was this part. Yeah, in the 3DO version, the rocks fall a lot faster, and it's harder to time when to go past them. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, and you don't want to go too close to those, because they will kill you. Tentacles. I love them. And there we go. Okay, so here. And if you look closely on the ground there, those little uh, white things are actually little pits of teeth. You can see they're like chewing. Yeah. So if you walk into one, needless to say, you die. If you touch the tentacles, you die. So. <clears throat> you can actually kill the tentacles. Look at that. I think you can get by just by having them retract, but uh, uh, there we go. <laughs> but I always feel safer annihilating the tentacles. Oh, Carol, there's more teeth on the other side there. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that can kill you in this game. Uh, a lot of trial and error, kind of figuring out uh, the puzzles, figuring out the best way to do things. Okay this. So why did we want to destroy that wall? Well, we'll find out in a moment here. 
So essentially for this, uh, we are looking at an archival recording, as you can probably tell from the kind of fuzzy picture quality. Um, this was originally recorded on video 8, and then I edited the footage together um, using all my best bits, I guess, just to have kind of a perfect run uh, using the uh, video 8 editor at the cable office. Oh, that was so close. How did I... How did... Wow, how did I live there? I don't know how I lived there, but okay. <laughs> uh, so the nice thing about the editor at the cable office was... Oh, there was a bird there. So follow the bird. Where does he go? He goes up there. Flies around. Oh. Oh, and the tentacles got him. Ah, very smart. So while the tentacle creature is busy nomming on the bird, we jump across the stalagmites or stalactites. I can't remember which is which. One of them is the ones that point down. One is the ones that point up. I think stalagmites are the ones that point down. Okay. Do a lot of mega blasts here. I imagine my gun must be running low on power by now. So I just run up there. Cross. There we go. Yeah, so you can see, I mean, there's a very specific path that you have to follow, right? So there's a lake or something up there. Oh boy, okay. Yeah, if you fall down the pit while the water's chasing you, you drown, basically. But, uh, yeah, there's been a, a few different versions of this released over the years. Uh, the original, of course, was on the Amiga. There was later a PC version. Um, there was the 3DO version, of course. And then there was also... Uh, they also released a 25th anniversary edition. Uh, or maybe it was a 20th anniversary edition. I can't remember. The, I think it was a 20th anniversary edition, actually, a few years back. Uh, I guess it was 2012. And uh, put that out on various platforms. Oh, there's my friend. Finally, where has he been all this time? Um, so they released the 20th Anniversary Edition, which uh, contained two versions of the game. Um, it has the original classic version, which looks and sounds exactly like what you're seeing here. And then it also has an enhanced version, which has uh, more detailed backgrounds, uh, higher quality music, and all that uh, good stuff. And, uh, and it's one of those ones where you can actually switch back and forth between the old and new versions on the fly, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> oh yeah, nailed them right away. I like how when you zap them, you see their skeleton briefly, and then they just fall to pieces. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so there was a waterfall there, which is no longer there because we drained the pool, basically. I guess that feeds it. So now we can actually get across, which we couldn't before. Okay. So, so we took out the chandelier. Does that guy chase us or? Yes. Well, he's gone now. <laughs> All right. Good. Drop the chandelier. If you heard a beep just now, I'm making pizzas, so that will be food after we're done here. Oh, right in the face. <laughs> I like how he does the little roll to get the gun there. Again, very cinematic. Love the cinematicness. Just run. Oh, no. Okay, I guess I'm dead. We'll try that again. <laughs> Apparently I didn't bother re-showing the uh, successful run there. Whoa. What did you just do? I don't know where I'm going. Um, okay, I guess that guy's not following us. Never mind. Oh, wow. Reflexes, man. <laughs> oh, right, because this is uh, that's a barrier. 
Network. And what, what are you doing? Why am I just sitting there? Oh, look out. He threw a bomb. Alright, the bomb is gone, but we're still hearing the sound for some reason. I don't know why we're still hearing the rolling bomb sound. Recharge! Yay! I'm sure I desperately need it by this point. Um, there we go. <laughs> It's like the sound got stuck in that channel. The, the Amiga has four channels of sound, so... Oh, you see the reflection of the guy pacing underneath? And... <laughs> it's great. Creative solutions to dispatching the bad guys. I love it. It's not all just shooting them in the face. You know, there's a there's a puzzle solving. Oh, did you see down in the lower left corner there? Run it back if you missed it. We just caught a glimpse of our alien friend rolling down the corner. So I guess when we shot down the chandelier earlier, it uh, dropped that barrier that was in front of him. And he was able to get by. Really? There we go. Okay, we got it. Got it. Better hurry up. Shields through it dwindling. Really? Oh my god. There we go. Yeah, the trick is to hit the shield with one of the mega blasts, which knocks out their shield, and then quickly fire off a few shots to uh, to take them out. Okay, so now we go down into the water going here and as always I mean being underwater we got to go quickly because you do run out of air after a while and you will drown yeah I think by the frequency of the bubbles uh, where are we going okay go up this one ah yes Right, yeah, because the other one ends in a dead end. It's just more water. So you'd swim all the way up there and then drown. <laughs> I do like how he turns based on what direction he's swimming to. That's a nice little attention to detail. Okay, so what do we have here? Something flowing upwards. Okay, I guess it was a power line of some kind. Very nice. I think we saw something similar to that uh, in the part with the elevator. Yeah, good idea. Get some more air. Okay, I think we're good. It's a very quiet game. See the thing chewing, trying to get me? <laughs> That's great. Yeah, some other inspirations for this were things like uh, Karataka and the original Prince of Persia. Um, I'd say probably it shares the most similarities with the original Prince of Persia in terms of game mechanics, where it had, again, creative solutions to dispatching enemies, and also having... Oh, there's the guy we hit with the glass ball. That's awesome. Um, but also a lot of treacherous platforming where you really had to know which way you were supposed to go and uh, the best path to follow and the best way to get to where you needed to go. Oh. Oh, okay. I wouldn't have thought to jump down there. Oh. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. Oh, there's our guy up there. Crawling through the hole. Oh boy, this is a mad dash here. Uh, 
on the run. Okay, no more. Can't run anymore. We gotta fight. Oh my god, really? There we go. Okay. Oh, look, my guy's up there. My friend's up there. Like, come on, come on, let's go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and they killed themselves. <laughs> okay, here we go. We got our escape ship. We're getting out of here. Here we go. It should be smooth sailing from here. We're in some kind of coliseum. Uh, yes. Push, push buttons. Push all of the buttons. Push all the buttons. So you can see it highlights a button and you can decide to push it. There's other buttons that light up when you push certain buttons. And... Oh, we launched a missile. We, we launched a missile into the crowd. That's... Great. Got some guns blasting here. Oh, launched a bigger missile. Oh, here it goes. Another missile. Oh, there's that big one circling around the Coliseum. <laughs> Push the buttons. A whole pile of missiles. Another one into the crowd, and boom! Holy crap! Okay, there's the one. Escape pods. It's funny. Like by this point, I knew what all the buttons did, so I made sure to save the escape pod one for last, just so you can see what all the other ones do. <laughs> Bunch of naked girl aliens freaking out. And not a moment to rest. We can get more guys shooting at us again. One down. Better get a shield happening. There we go. Holy moly. Okay. We just got the whole army after us here. Yeah, so my friends who understood games and programming and stuff uh, definitely appreciated this and enjoyed it as I did. But uh, there, there were a few that just didn't quite get it, if you know what I mean. Oh no! Uh, where'd you go? Oh, my friend rescued me somehow. That's not my friend. Oh, that's brutal. Slammed me into the wall and kicked me in the face. Yeah, there we go. Kick his ass. <laughs> Listen to those meaty slaps. You can just feel the brutality. Move. This is kind of a timing thing as well. You got to do what you got to do. While the fight is still going. Uh oh. So that was my friend that just got tossed over the side. And boom! Dead. Okay, so we move back. To have come so far. Oh god, and now we're being shot at again. Oh, where'd we go? Oh, 
Oh, it's a big one of those birds. Look at that. go. That is the story of another world. So there was a sequel, uh, not done by Eric Chahi. It was done, I guess, by the game company Interplay. But uh, it only ever appeared on the Sega CD. Yes, there was a Sega CD version. So if you got the Sega CD version of this, you got the sequel packaged with it. Uh, and it was called Out of This World 2 Heart of the Alien. You can find some playthroughs of that on YouTube. But it actually sort of continues the story and also tells the story of your alien friend and what he was up to while he was trying to get back to you. So, kind of cool. I've heard it's not as good as this one because this one is just amazing. I mean, it still endures as a timeless classic. Great stuff. Now go back to another Earth. And that's why I used the original title because Out of This World doesn't make sense with that. That was really good. Now, I went through your video letter this morning uh, after doing the intro for Another World. What would you think of that, by the way? Pretty cool, eh? Uh, thought you might like that. I showed that to Chris yesterday, uh, who is heavily into computers and uh, video games, and compu especially computer games. And uh, he was just totally blown away. He was just like, holy shit, that is so incredible. Everything. He's like, through the whole thing, he was saying, this isn't a game, this is a movie. You know, 